Takuma Inouye versus Jerwin Ankahas, 12 rounds for Inouye's WBA bantamweight title. This one is happening in Tokyo on the 24th. The fight was postponed because Inouye, I believe, suffered a rib injury, which makes things that much more interesting considering Ankahas is a guy that does target the body pretty often, pretty consistently. So will Inouye's ribs be tender on the night? We'll see. Let's get into it. Let's start with the champ. In a way, is coming off of a big year last year where he won the vacant WBA bantamweight title from Solis, a title that was held by none other than his older brother, Naoya Inoue. Man, that's got to be a real cool feeling. You know what I'm saying? But his path has not been the same as his brothers. It's been different because they're different fighters. They have some similarities in some ways, but there's no doubt that Naoya Inoue is a bigger puncher. He's more accurate. He's sharper, more elusive, and just the all-around complete better fighter, right? The other part is you would think that Takuma would have some of that same power that 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 his older brother has but that hasn't been the case he didn't get those same physical advantages and gifts as his brother had so he can't bulldoze his way into physically imposing his power and size on his opponents he's had to find different ways to win he's had to rely on movement he's had to rely on tactics he's had to rely on game plan and strategy he's had to rely on making good adjustments and making sure that he's technically sound and not neglecting the fundamentals of boxing that makes fighters solid. And that's, you got to start with the jab. You got to use the combinations. You got to find different ways to win fights if you're not a big puncher. He suffered his first loss of his career where he fought Nordin Ubali, a guy who has good power, um, an aggressive style, and he's tricky. He knows how to use and disguise his attacks to get his shots off. In a way, didn't fight a bad fight in their fight per se, right? I thought he had good moments and worked well in spurts. I thought he countered well throughout the fight, but he got outworked that fight. Nordino Bali, man, didn't show him any type of respect. It's like in the first, second round, you know, they always say, I know how big of a puncher my opponent is in the first, second round, and then I can go and make adjustments accordingly, right? A lot of fighters have said that it's the feel out process. I'm trying to see what they have. What does that power feel like? And Nobali did not fear Tacoma in a way's power by no means because he just kept marching forward every single round, kept being more physical every single round, letting his hands go, whether he was getting hit or not. Every single round he was coming forward, showed him no respect. And it was starting to pay dividends because the physicality of the fight was starting to get to in the way. He was starting to get clipped, hit into the body. And in the fourth round, he got dropped for the first time in his career. But credit to him because he got back up and found his way back into the fight. Now, when Inouye kept the fight in the center of the ring, he was able to work well using that jab, letting off combinations, doing, doing good work when... He was able to control and know his awareness inside of the ring. Now, where he was having problems against Ubali was when he was fighting on the back foot, when he found himself stuck on the ropes and didn't have any way to laterally use that movement to his favor. That's when he was in trouble. But to his credit, man, after the knockdown, I felt like he was dialed in a little bit more. Because he was clipping Ubali with some good shots. But the difference was he didn't really have the power for his opponent to really respect him. The power difference was apparent in both men. In the 12th round of that fight, man, in a way, caught Ubali, Ubali with a counter right hand that, that backed him up. And you could see that he was hurt. But in a way, wasn't able to close out the show. But I felt like if he would have made adjustments throughout that fight, and bring that level of aggression consistently throughout the rounds, he might have been able to gain the respect just off the sheer physicality and aggression, even if he didn't have the power to necessarily back him up or really hurt him too much, right? But you can still give that persona and create that image of you being something bigger than you're not right? You can make it seem like you're a big puncher if you're letting your hands go and being more physical, even if on paper you don't have the power to necessarily back it up, right? But after he suffered that loss, I mean, he was able to get back into the win column and win his next five fights, including a win over Shingo Wake, 
right? Which he fought very well in that fight. Shout out to Shingo, man. He just has a great name. <laughs> this is a great name. In his most recent fight, he fought Laborio Solis, uh, uh, the Venezuelan boxer who was a little bit older, I believe at the time, maybe he's 40, 41 years old. And he was able to do whatever he wanted to do in that fight, in my opinion, right? I thought Inoue was in control of the fight. He was faster, sharper, more accurate, and the much better counter puncher on the night, right? Inoue's defense, I felt like, was solid on that night as well, too. There are moments when he dares Solis to come at him and swing and let your hands go because he would just stay on the ropes and he would just be right there daring him to come on in and that's what uh solis did but he wasn't having any success but you could see the confidence was in in a way's favor he was feeling good his combinations looked fast the hand speed looked right and i felt like his chin looked right as well too because he got clipped in that seventh round with an overhand right hand that landed plainly crisp flush on his chin but then the way he took it slipped out of the way and got right back in the center of the ring and got back to business. So I felt like that fight, it was in a way's fight to lose on the night because Solis, man, you know, he, father time was starting to catch up with him and he just got outworked by the younger fighter who was at that stage more skilled than him on the night. I thought it was a great performance from in and he earned that win. He earned that title, man. But, you know, Ankahas is not going to make it an easy night. Ankos is going to be ready, and he's going to be dangerous as well, too, man. And I'm sure that his team knows, wait a minute, this cat over here hurt his ribs a little bit. I might have to make that a priority, and I might have to target that off the jump. Let's talk about his opponent, Jerwin Ankahas. 34 wins, 3 losses, 2 draws, 23 wins by way of knockout, man. I like Ankahas. He always comes to fight win lose or draw he's always going to bring his best he's always going to be in the fight every single time always respected that about him and i think he has a very good shot of winning this fight even though it's not on neutral ground uncle Haas is a former champion in his own right he beat mick joe arroyo in 2016 to win the title then went on a nice win streak on a nice run of eight title defenses during that run right during that run he stopped six of those opponents so fighting away isn't necessarily a big problem for him like he's used to that right fighting under pressure no problem he's used to that i thought he was in a close fight against alexandro santiago a fighter who is very underrated santiago just beat nanito donaire to win his first world title right last year many people in that fight felt like Jerwin Ankahas lost that fight right and I'm not saying that they're wrong <laughs> I understand why you might say that that's a close fight Santiago even though his record looks a little shaky but he's been in some close fights and he's been a fighter in my opinion who a lot of the draws that he's got were fights that he should have won so he was in tough against Santiago right Ankahas was having some problems when they fought. It was a close fight. I thought Santiago did a great job of limiting the jab of Ancajas and making uh, himself tough to hit cleanly and consistently, right? But that fight was a draw, and so we moved forward. Now, when Ancajas fought Martinez the first time, it was a fight when I did the breakdown of that fight. I said, man, you know, because a lot of people didn't really know Martinez like that. He kind of went under the radar. Not not a lot of fights, not a whole bunch of tape. But that was a fight that, man, I was just like, man, I know Martinez is not really too well known like that. But man, this is a dangerous fight because Martinez is a guy who is at, he's wild at times. Absolutely. But he's a guy that he's going to let his hands go. He's a guy that has great conditioning, great cardio, and a and a and a and a will and a determination about him inside. He's gonna let his hands fly from every angle and every way that he can. And so you're thinking to yourself, can Ankahas keep up with the pace of M Martinez? And Martinez coming in is a little bit fresher. He hasn't had too many fights. Ankahas been in some wars himself. Martinez, he's had less wars than Ankahas has had. And over time, we've seen that does play a part. Can he keep up with that volume of Martinez? If you've seen Martinez fight, you know he's someone 
who every single punch, every single shot is a power punch. Like he's sitting down on everything. He doesn't really make the jab a priority. He's a guy that is going to hit you with constant pressure. He's a guy that gets hit often, but he's someone who you have to get ready to work. You got to be on your P's and Q's with him, right? Every single round is a power shot. And every single round, Martinez is in constant, consistent pursuit every single round. And so it wasn't that Ankahas was not holding his own because he clipped Martinez a couple times and had him hurt a couple times in that fight. But you can't just let off one or two shots because for every one or two, three shots that you try to put forth, Martinez is returning fire with three, four, five, six, seven, and all of those shots are heavy punches, heavy swings, heavy shots. And the way how Martinez smothers you with shots, it's just tough for him, for anybody to really get into a groove when you're fighting Martinez because of his style. And I thought that even though Ankahas did have good responses and did fight well throughout the fight, he just got outworked. The volume was too much. It was too high. And he wasn't able to create that separation that he needs to really get busy. Martinez just smothered him with shots. And he wasn't able to really get the separation he needed to do what he needed to do and to separate, to catch his breath to gain that momentum and to gain his flow. He just wasn't in consistent momentum throughout that fight. And in the second fight as well, too. I thought in the second fight, Martinez won with a little bit more ease than the first fight, right? It was more, well, more definitive for better words. He just looked better, more calculated, more patient, more controlled. If Martinez, again, makes the jab a priority, it's going to make him that much more of a better fighter, right? But Ankahas, man, credit to him. Yo, you're going to have to stop this guy to take him out because as long as he's in the fight, he's going to keep coming. He's going to give it everything that he has. But against Martinez, man, he he, he got out work. In Ankahas' most recent fight, he fought Wilner Soto, and I thought he looked pretty good. You know, the, the, the body shots were quick and accurate. He countered well, and he was patient. He didn't really have too much problems with Soto, man. Whatever he wanted to do that fight, that's exactly what he did right? He didn't overextend himself. He took what was given to him. And when it was time to turn on the pressure and to really turn it up and let his hands go, he was able to do that. He did not respect the power of Soto by no means because he didn't make defense a priority, but he didn't get hit a whole lot that fight either. He just kept coming forward, walked right through him and physically did whatever he wanted to do, didn't respect the power, just walked through it and landed so many body shots and different shots that eventually Soto, he went down. I mean, Soto got punched up that night from all angles, man. I'm not, I'm not mad at him for taking that knee. It was going to get ugly in that fight. So I thought it was a good performance and a bounce back win after suffering two losses. A good portion of this too is how much is Ankahas has left and we'll find out on the night. So who wins? You know, I think Ankahas can win this fight if I'm on his team, as I said at the beginning, I'm hearing in a ways having problems with the ribs. I'm, 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 I'm going to the body early. I'm making that a priority. I'm targeting the body, trying to break him down round to round. Anka Haas uh, is a very good body puncher, man. He has the power to hurt in a way. I don't think in a way has the power to hurt Anka Haas, in my opinion, but in a way has improved in certain areas of his style. Uh, he's always going to come in with a good game plan. His team makes good adjustments, especially if his brother's in the corner to help him, you know, and his dad's in the corner to help him. They're, they're, they're going to make the right decisions. They're going to try to come forth with a good game plan. The other thing, too, that I'm going back and forth in my head as I'm talking about it is, man, it's tough to ignore the fact that Ankahas is coming in to Japan to try and get the win over Inoue. The name Inoue is a very popular name in Japan. So the judges and the crowd is going to be in his favor. And it's tough for me to see him getting a decision in victory. Not impossible, but it's just tough to see unless he comes in and every round is definitive and the close rounds are definitive. Maybe he gets some knockdowns. And if he definitely stops him, well, it, it, it's out of the question. So I think the safe choice right, is to say in a way to win this fight by decision, which is more than likely that could be the outcome. I think the draw is in play as well, too, from having a discussion with my man TJ. He brought that to my attention, and that's not something to rule out either. So in a way, yes, it's the safe 
decision is to say, you know what, in a way, win this fight by some type of decision, split decision type of deal. But I'm going to go against the grain here, man. I'm going to go with Jerwin Ankahas to win this fight. I think Ankahas can come out and win this fight. How? I think he needs to stop in a way. I think he needs to break him down or at least score some knockdowns to get a fair shake in this fight. So I think it's possible Ubali has hurt him. Ankahas is a, is, a, is a former champion who's fought great opposition, who's got the power to overwhelm in a way. But can he put together the right game plan? Can he not chase inside of the ring? Can he cut off the ring? Those are all things that's going to be answered on the night. But I do think, I, st I think that he can pull it off and he can get it done. Again, the safe bet in Japan is to say in a way to win this fight by decision. But this time I'm rolling with Anka Haas to get it done on the night. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways that you can do so you can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. And the amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to all the members holding down the membership section. I appreciate each of you as well. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Man, I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And we'll definitely see you next time.